So with handout 8, now we need to deal with the process of signing our final APK. When our app is complete, we have to, decide, we have to sign it as a developer certificate. We're going to go through the process of signing it as an Android developer. And we would need to do something similar to sign it as an Apple developer. And we would need to do something similar to sign it as, an, as a Microsoft developer. So if we wanted our app to go to the you know, Google Play Store, the iOS App Store, the Windows Store, we need to have a certificate that tells the stores, I'm a developer, this is my app, please allow it on the App Store. Um, over with iOS, we have to basically apply at developer.apple.com to create this certificate and they'll create it and they'll give it to us and then we use it. Um, that's part of the process of the $99 per year fee that we have to pay to Apple to be a developer. Even if we're going to give our apps away for free on the App Store. For the Android App Store, we can create a self-signing certificate. We ourselves will type a command to create a developer certificate and we say we're a developer. Who says? We says. Over on the Apple side, who says? Apple says. So here this is again another great aspect why doing this via Android is so open and so easy and so direct. We're gonna see as we get to the actual App Store uh, also other hurdles depending on the different App Stores. So for us to create the developer certificate in the command prompt, we need to type this big command here. I'll explain what it is as we type it. So go ahead and open up your command prompt. I'm going to open it up directly in um, my project folder. Actually, I'm going to open the command prompt just on my flash drive. I'm not actually in my project folder. We don't need to be in the project folder yet. I'm on my flash drive. We're going to use the key tool program. Key tool, one word. That comes with the that comes, I believe, with the Java development kit, the JDK. Space dash gen key. We're going to generate a brand new key, a new developer certificate. Space dash v give us verbose output, you know, show us what's happening. Because oftentimes DOS output or command prompt output can be very minimal, so we're saying verbose. Tell us what's happening the, every step of the way. Space dash key store. An actual file will be created. In my example, I've got it that we're going to call it your last name dot JKS. So if my last name is Smith, I would type Smith dot JKS. So you can call this whatever you want. Don't call it what I call it because it's my certificate. You can call it whatever you want. And this stuff that we're going to create can be changed later, but I would recommend to get it right the first time. It's less hassle. Space dash alias. This JKS file, this key store, you can also think about it as a key ring over on on the, on the Mac side, a key ring literally is a ring of keys, right? So these are the keys that I need to have in order to manage this room. You know, one opens the door, one opens a cabinet, whatever. All of this together gives me access to this room. So the JKS file is like the whole keychain. But on the keychain, I've got a key for this door and that cabinet and this drawer. So aliases are like the actual keys. And the way that this would make sense for a development team is that I can have an alias for John on the team, for Sally on the team, for Ken on the team. So each one can have their own alias and therefore their own password. And John can be the developer that signs the app or Sally or Bill, etc. But all of those keys are stored in this one file. To make it the easiest for us, most likely, just use the same last name that is the name of the actual file. We will need to then supply in a moment a password to unlock the whole keychain and a password to unlock a particular key. So a password for the whole key store, 
file and a password for this alias. We can use the exact same password for convenience, but for higher security, a different password. We'll provide the password in a moment. Space, another flag here, key alg. The algorithm for this key is RSA. I don't remember what that one stands for, but um, this is the algorithm that we're using to encrypt the key. This is going to be a file. It's not going to be plain text. It's going to be a special encrypted file that is then used at the moment that we sign our, our app. Space, the size of this key, key size, space, 20, 48 bytes, so 2 kilobytes, space, validity. How long is this key valid for? If you go look at the Android developer documentation, Google wants us to create keys that are valid for 25 years. This 10,000 is 10,000 days, I believe. So 10,000 divided by 365 is like 30 years. This key is going to be valid for like 30 years or so. Um, and it's just that Google needs, for whatever reason, that our key is valid for at least 25 years. So in the year 2036, we're still going to be app developers. Make sure all of this is perfectly spelled, of course, or it will fail. Let me confirm mine. Key tool, gen key, key store, alias, key alg key size, validity 10,000. Okay, so I'll, I will press enter. It's going to ask for a password for the actual JKS file. Whatever you type here, if you're doing this for real or just for class purposes, you want to remember what this is, to use it later. And in theory, what we're creating here, if, if you set this up properly right now, you can use it for all your further subsequent apps. Or if you're just doing it for testing purposes, you can create another developer's key here whenever you want. But you want to use the same JKS file every time you're going to publish your app. Then it'll ask us for a lot of information, which I have listed here in general. It'll ask us for me, the name of the developer, my organizational unit, which is like my job title. It'll ask me for the name of my company. Again, this can be totally fake. I'm going to make it up fake. It'll work. City, state, two character, country. Confirm that it all looks good. So, what's your first and last name? What is the name of your organizational unit? Developer. Name of your company. I call my company Victor's Apps. Name of your city or locality? San Diego. State or province? California. Two letter country code? US. Confirming all of that here, the name, organizational unit, blah, blah, blah. If it's not correct, the default will say it's not correct, and it'll ask you again. If you just press Enter, it'll assume you wrote no, so it'll have you do it again. All of these, if you're curious, what is your name? Unknown. It will be blank. So. In brackets is a is a default, but I will say yes. All of this looks good. I will type yes. Press enter. It's generating a 24, 2048 bit RSA key pair self signed certificate with a validity of ten thousand days. Then it's going to ask for a password of the actual alias, the individual key in the key store. You can use the same password as before. 
that's fine. Although, in the world of cybersecurity, you often have to balance convenience with security. Something that is more convenient is less secure, and something that is more secure is less convenient. For example, having a different password for all the websites you visit. You know, when you log into Facebook, it's one password. When you log into your bank, it's another password. When you log into the school, it's another password. That's much more convenient because if someone breaks into your personal email, they may have the password or the credentials for that one account, but not the other accounts. More secure. More secure, yes, yes. It's more secure because it's different passwords for different services. It's less convenient because you need a different password for every service. The more convenient aspect is the same password all the time. Super convenient, but very insecure because if one thing is compromised, many things could be compromised. You can use these password aggregating services like LastPass and 1Password and all of that. I personally favor more the security versus the convenience. I have a different password for all of my websites that I visit. Uh, and I don't use one of these password management systems. I have an algorithm in my mind that I use when I go to the different accounts. Very inconvenient, but more secure. This will process it and create your certificate file whatever.jks, wherever you saved it. I <coughs> saved it to my flash drive, right there, campus.jks. It's three kilobytes. If I try to view the file, it's gibberish. It's encrypted. Now that you have your JKS file, store it in a safe place. You will need to use this in all your future apps. It validates you as the creator of that app. Make a backup of the JKS file. Then make a backup of the backup. So I might be saving it on my desktop. Well, I'm also saving it to a USB disk. And maybe to my, uh, my NAS server, or maybe to my Dropbox account or someplace. So make copies of that JKS file, especially if this is for real. For our class purposes, it's not such a big deal if you lose this file. You just create another one. But when you want to do this for real, then you're going to publish it on the real app stores. If you want to release a version 2, and you don't have this JKS file anymore, you're going to need to recreate it. And it's a different file. Not, it's simply if it's called the same name, it's not the same file. Internally, it'll be a different file. So if you had to recreate your JKS file, you're a new developer because all of that 2048-bit data is different. It's encrypted into something else. So the problem will be that you're trying to upload version 2 of your app and Google or iPhone will tell you, Apple will tell you, you're not the right developer. This JKS file points to a different developer. So you're going to be in trouble. For our purposes, doesn't matter too much, but for your real purposes, eventually it matters a lot. How many of you use any sort of cloud backup solutions? Dropbox, what else is there? OneDrive, Google Drive, etc. Um, they're valuable because that's off site storage. You may have a backup of your main computer on some USBs and some extra hard drives, but all of that is on the same location. And if, that, if your house burns down, the backup of your backup of your backup is in the same location and you lost all your data, even though you had backups of backups. So perhaps one of these online storage solutions might be very valuable because it's an off-site off storage solution. What we do with this JKS file, let me just hone in on one thing and then we'll do it, is we've been doing taco build or taco run. We're about to do taco build android dash dash release. We're going to create a release ready version, a version that the app stores will accept. And it's very quirky what we need to do here 
because we need to have a couple of dashes here by themselves with no flag. We have dash dash release, dash dash key store, etc. We have to have dash dash nothing. People get confused by that. They think, did, did he mistype something on his notes? No, you have to have two slashes, two dashes there with nothing. We're then going to say dash dash key store. Where is your JKS file with a full path? And then what particular alias or particular key are we using? Our setup here is um, we could do a final taco build if we want. It'll do it here anyway at this point. We can do a final build to see if any errors show up, fix the errors, and then do the release build. You will refer to your JKS file in the command prompt. So make sh to make typing easier, copy the file to the root of your C drive. Because right now I've got my JKS file on my flash drive. But maybe I had my JKS file on the desktop. So when I, if I'm going to write the code eventually, I'm going to have it, don't type this yet, but I'd have key store equals something. I'd have to have some sort of path. And the desktop is usually something like users slash whatever your name is. In this case, it's lab slash desktop slash mykey.jks. So to avoid this weird path, a very easy way is I'm saying maybe just put it on the C drive, the root level of the C drive or the root level of the F drive. So you can find it. So I'm going to go into the project, the last version of the project. Make sure you're in the project folder. Taco build Android space dash dash release. There's no space between these dashes here. And there's a space for these phantom double dashes. Double dash, double dash key store equals c colon backslash, then the path. Well, obviously, if you're typing exactly what I have in the handout, it won't work unless you do have your JKS file on the C drive. I've got mine on the F drive. And then the name of my JKS file. Obviously, if you're typing exactly what I'm typing, it won't work. Your JKS file is probably not called that. Space, dash, dash, alias. And whatever you called your alias of your, in your key store. Press enter on that. Eventually, you will get a very basic and nondescript pop up in the middle of your screen that will ask you for your key store password, the JKS file. And then after that, it'll ask you for the alias password. Type both of those in. Eventually, we will get build successful. And then we'll see that we've got the final JKS, uh, the final APK file.
There it is. So eventually you get a little pop-up, enter password. Second password, it's the alias. It doesn't really tell you at that moment if you mistype the password. It'll tell you somewhere in the output there eventually. Hopefully you, you typed the same password. All right, so eventually it finishes. It looks similar to other times we've done a build. But if you notice here, on the path, android-release.apk. Every other time we've been doing a taco build or a taco run, we've been getting an android-debug.apk file. We've been getting a debug version of the project. Now we have a release-ready version. This is the only version that the app stores will accept. So my handout further says to go into this particular folder and move out or copy that file and put it in another place for, for yourself. So I'm saying in my flash drive, in my current project folder, in the uh, platforms folder, in the Android folder, in the build folder, outputs, APK folder. Here are the debug versions that we've had before. The debug versions. And the release version with today's date and time. The debug versions, these uh, were you know, 1120K, this currently release ready version is 1054, so that saved almost uh, 100 kilobytes of data. Cleaning it out a bit, that was the pre-flight check uh, purpose. So I'm going to right click uh, well, I'm just going to drop it to the top level of my flash drive, or move it to the top level of my flash drive. It's there. If I'm working with more than one uh, project, a name like Android Release will be hard to keep track of what project is this. So in my notes, I'm suggesting to name this what the project is, and you know, like maybe a number one, my app one release APK or whatever way to whatever way to name this for your own records. That this is that particular app. It's version code one. When we do the second version of our project, that will create another Android release.apk file which I'll then rename eventually to mysdce2.apk. So this file here is the final version of the project, the release-ready version. My handout then says, congratulations, you have a release-ready version of your app to distribute. We're going to take a break in a moment. 
now we need to talk about distribution. We have several avenues, but now we've got something to distribute. A, an app to either give away or an app to sell, 99 cents a pop or more. Um, and um, we'll talk about that right after the break. So it's 7.20. If you manage to create this, great. If not, call me over. We'll figure it out. But let's take a break until 7.30, and then we'll talk about the App Store itself.